five minutes and counting. T minus 45, the countdown uh, proceeding satisfactorily. We've been in our final countdown for Apollo 7 now for some 19 hours since it picked up yesterday afternoon, and all aspects of the mission are still go. We're still keeping a close look on weather conditions, particularly the surface winds in the Cape Kennedy area. October 11th, 1968. Launch day for Apollo 7, the first manned Apollo flight. Apollo spacecraft 101, mounted on top of a Saturn 1B launch vehicle, stood ready on launch pad 34 of the Kennedy Space Center. The Apollo 7 command and service modules finished systems checks in Downey near the end of April 1968 at the North American Rockwell Space Division. The flight crew of Wally Schirra, Walt Cunningham, and Don Isley gave their crew cabin a final function test and pronounced the spacecraft ready. After delivery to the Kennedy Space Center, the spacecraft was again checked over thoroughly and verified ready for launch. Apollo 7, in its flight configuration, was mated to the lunar module adapter, and at Launch Complex 34, the entire assembly was stacked on the two-stage Saturn launch vehicle for final flight preparations. In August, a flight date of October 11th was announced. Seconds and counting, we have completed our power transfer. The Saturn 1B launch Just two minutes, 45 seconds after the hour that had been set months before, Apollo 7 left the pad in a perfect launch. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, we have ignition. Commit liftoff, we have liftoff. This is launch control, we have the tower. Roger, tower clear. 12 seconds out and the roll program has commenced. Twenty-four seconds out and Shira reports the pitch program has commenced. Forty seconds, the roll program is complete. The Saturn first stage burned for two and one half minutes with 1,600,000 pounds of thrust. 55 seconds, the cabin is relieving. Shira reported a little noise. One minute. One minute, 20 seconds into the flight. All systems go on the ground and in the air. One minute, 40 seconds. Flight director asks the flight dynamics officer if he likes it, and he says, yes, sir, it looks good. Booster engine cutoff came at 35 miles altitude and at a speed of over 5,000 miles an hour. Second stage ignition was clearly visible. Apollo 7 entered Earth orbit at an altitude of over 140 miles at a speed of more than 17,000 miles an hour. Engineers manned a mission support room in Downey to provide round-the-clock technical advice and support to the Apollo 7 mission as the crew began the first of many mission objectives. After nearly three hours of flight, the spacecraft separated from the second stage. The lunar module adapter panels opened and, as shown by artwork, the spacecraft was maneuvered to simulate transposition and docking with a lunar module. Spacecraft Commander Shira tested Apollo maneuverability, flying his spacecraft within a few feet of the second stage. Uh, roger. Looks like you're looking at a four-jawed angry alligator.
Later in the flight, the Apollo 7 crew conducted a simulated rescue mission using the giant second stage as a target. Cape Kennedy was clearly visible below as the two vehicles passed in formation over the Florida Peninsula. As the crew gained confidence in their spacecraft, the flight settled into an orderly routine. Cunningham and Isley soon became accustomed to their first experience in a weightless environment. The crew joked about zero gravity during the first television shows ever beamed from space. At this time, gentlemen, the left face. Trip up, face. Up out. Up out. At various times during the flight, the Apollo 7 astronauts pointed their cameras out of the spacecraft windows to record some of the most breathtaking scenes of the Earth ever photographed. The entire state of Florida, with Cape Kennedy appearing as a tiny island at the top of the picture. Hurricane Gladys, shortly before it swept over Florida. the Los Angeles Basin, Palos Verdes Peninsula, and Catalina Island surrounded by clouds. And the lower half of the Baja California Peninsula. Spacecraft systems continued to function perfectly throughout the flight. Here, Cunningham mixes a fruit drink. Meals were also prepared in much this same fashion. Command Module Pilot Isley tested the guidance and navigation system with star and Earth landmark sightings. Firings of the service propulsion engine demonstrated Apollo's ability to make mid-course corrections en route to the moon and to power itself back to Earth from lunar orbit. The first manned Apollo flight was 1,000 times longer than the first Mercury flight, 50 times longer than the first Gemini nearly 11 days, 4 million miles in space. 30 minutes before the scheduled landing, the spacecraft's main engine was fired to slow it for entry, the last of eight engine burns. The command module separated from the service module and Wally Schirra gave ground controllers his reaction. Films from Apollo 6 give some idea of the view from Apollo 7 as it entered the atmosphere at 16,600 miles an hour. The spacecraft descended rapidly, 400,000 feet over New Orleans, then the hottest part of the entry at 35 miles altitude over Florida. Recovery forces tracked and listened as Shara announced, wheels down and locked, and the spacecraft descended into the Atlantic Ocean, little more than 500 yards from the predicted impact point. A final unscheduled but anticipated test of Apollo 7 came when the spacecraft came to rest nose down in the stable two position. Uprighting bags, shown extended, righted the spacecraft, and the Apollo 7 flight was ended.
Apollo 7 astronauts Shira and Cunningham were given a hero's welcome on their return to Downey, where they addressed the men and women who built the spacecraft. left this plant, we left with a good spacecraft. And I can recall vividly when we went to the Cape, we didn't present them with the spacecraft. We said, it's here now, take good care of it. It was built well, and it was built carefully. In fact, I said so much that John Hay didn't have anything to say when I asked him to come up on the stage. The only other remark I have to make is that I hope you make the rest almost as good as 101. It's not possible to make one that good every time you put one out. But I sure hope you'll try to. Thank you. And now the world's number one space photographer, Walt Cunningham. <laughs> A lot of people ask me, uh, 11 days, wasn't that an ordeal? And I can honestly say that thanks to you people, that was no ordeal at all. I spent 11 very pleasant days, very relaxed as a matter of fact, and I think we owe it all to you. Thank you for a great spacecraft. The Apollo 7 mission was best summed up by the comments of leading NASA officials. Mr. George Lowe, NASA Apollo program manager. The North American Rattle Corporation, builder of the uh, spacecraft, deserves a great deal of credit for the work they accomplished. General Samuel Phillips, head of the Apollo program for NASA. Apollo 7 goes in my book as a perfect mission. This is the first space operation that's accomplished more than 100% of its pre-planned objectives. And to uh, accomplish a very major step in our uh, progress toward uh, the man lunar landing. 